Let us just stand on our feet once again. Lift up your hands at home and worship the King of Kings at this time. As we focus onto the cross at this time, as we dissect the word at the cross, lift up your hands and worship. May the Holy Ghost fall upon you right now in the name of Jesus. May you experience the touch of his invisible hand. For the word of the Lord says his hand is not shortened that it may save. It is at this time that we pray this hand of God that it may save. Hallelujah. There is no life that is so far gone that God cannot save it, that God cannot renew it. Ah, Maya Bande Shanda Bayeke de Bondosia, Libra Calabandesia, Dango Shaba Calabandesi.
Jesus. about to speak that will strip the veil to be opened that we may behold the glory of God that we may behold the bridge that was set for me and you that we may cross to the other side that we may have fellowship with God that our sins may be taken that there will be no nothing that will hinder us from becoming before the throne of grace. For the word of the Lord says, Come boldly to the throne of grace and obtain mercy in times of need. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we usher your church at this time. We usher your children from different places, oh God, we take a posture that you will unveil us at the cross in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We are back. Bazalwane, we are back to look at the seven words that Jesus spoke at the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. We are still in our 
of the love that was pinned at the cross for me and you. Hallelujah. Jesus. As we come uh, to hear the seven words, want us to quickly go to the book of Luke 23. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Spirit of the Lord, take over and take control as we come to the pinnacle of the gospel, as we come to the climax of the gospel, hallelujah, Amen. which is, Father, forgive them. This is the pinnacle of the gospel, and I believe it is because this is where most of us are surrendering to say I cannot do Christianity if this is what is expected of me hallelujah and so some of us we soldier on amen and yet the word that will encourage you to soldier on even at this time father forgive them I do not know who has afflicted you. I don't know who has crushed you, who has bruised you. I don't know who has lied uh, uh, to you yeah. and about you. I don't know who has assassinated your character Jesus. at this time. I don't know who is that person whose feet you have washed, but they've actually gone to assassinate your character. I don't know who is that person that was so close to you that actually came and spit on your face when you turned your back. They were part of the people that were whipping you. They were part of the people that were carrying spears and knives and stabbing your back of all the things that you have done for them. But here we are at the foot of the cross and the Lord Jesus is saying, Father, forgive them. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord says that he is the author. He is the finisher of our faith. He is Alpha. He is Omega. He is the beginning. Yes, he is Lord. the end. Yes. And therefore I speak this word to us as I speak it to myself. That here we are. If he is the author and the finisher of our faith. If he is Alpha and Omega, if he is the beginning and the end, therefore I charge you, child of God, to speak as he spoke and say, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. It is not according to your strength, but it is according to the influence and the inspiration at the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. It is not how we perceive things, but it is according to the demonstration of the gospel at the cross. Hallelujah. That is why I call this the climax of the gospel. This is the epitome of the gospel. This is where our faith is tested. This is where our faith is, is put under a, 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 a microscope for people to determine are you a true child of God? It is through forgiveness that we are tested if we really know the Lord Jesus Christ. For if you know him, if you know him, you will release the people that you've trapped in your heart because he did. He demonstrated for us. He walked the journey for us. And I want us to look at the five pillars of true forgiveness as we look at the cross. Hallelujah. Amen. The five pillars of forgiveness as we look at the cross. Hallelujah. Uh, Bazalwane, here is Jesus in Luke 23, verse 34. It is our foundation scripture. It is the scripture that I want us to reflect on as we take this word into our hearts. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. 
Hallelujah. Amen. For they do not know what they are doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. I want you to paint a mental picture as you are taking these words into your heart. And picture the Lord Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, bruised, battered, in pain, having gone to Gabata and experienced the mighty of the sovereign God. With all the other stations that he went through. He is here. One would have thought that with so much pain, he will retaliate. Yes. One would have thought with so much pain, he will call upon the legions of heaven. He will call upon the angels of heaven. To come and spite everyone that had done him wrong. Paint the mental picture of your own afflictions. Of what people have done to you. And imagine the price. Here are two pillars. Your pains. Your afflictions. Your betrayal. On the other side. And on the other side, you see the cup that is still undone. On the other side, you see the destiny that is at stake if you retaliate. On the other side, you see the finished work that cannot be undone. You see the destiny that cannot be altered. But if you retaliate, this cannot stand. Whose report are you going to take? That of God or that of the enemy? In Konzo, Bazalwane, Enga Simnandi, I Simnandi, In Konzo, your forgiveness. Forgiveness. But nonetheless, nonetheless, we minister it because it is the pinnacle of this gospel. It is the pinnacle of our faith. Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Utinu Jesu Bazara. Uti Abaya Zindabayanza Yoganja ni. Because he was surrounded by men of Rome, people who were known to be educated, people who were intelligent in the in the eyes of men, people who knew the law. What is Jesus saying when he says they do not know what they are doing? That know what they are doing. of 
this world. That is where we are tested. Amen. The knowledge that we have about God. Jesus Christ says they do not know what they are doing because he understands the knowledge of God. Forgiveness was testing the knowledge that he has about his father. Forgiveness was testing the knowledge that he has about you and me. Hallelujah. He had us in mind. He had you and me in mind. And so Jesus was, was actually in a negotiation to say, do I let go of my children? Do I let go of my father and bow to the enemy? Or do I stand for the knowledge of my father and my children? And he stood for us. And he said, because they don't know what they are doing. Meaning each time somebody afflicts us and they do us wrong and they betray us and they gossip about us and they do all sorts of things about us, it is because they do not have revelation of scriptures. Amen. And when uh, who has revelation of scriptures, you take a bow and you extend grace to them. Amen. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Namthanje, Mkhabeni, we could easily ask a question, so Utini, I must just let a person walk over me, right? We use those kind of statements. So I must just let them walk over me. No angenzi wanjalo mina. Batu chesu ba menza njalo. Be menza njalo nje. He just said, Father, forgive me. Amen. True forgiveness. Pillar number one will serve true forgiveness will serve Amen. it will serve. Amen. it will carry through process mm. when you already know You will save. We saw Jesus in John 13, verse 5, when he was preparing for the cross. He washed the feet of his disciples and Judas. He already knew that Jesus that Judas would betray him, but he washed his feet nevertheless. True forgiveness will receive revelation from God. You will receive dreams and visions and God will uncover certain things to you. When God does that, he is elevating you to his knowledge. So that when the betrayer starts to move, to afflict you, you can be in a place of wisdom. To say, Father, forgive them. Mm -hmm. But if you use your dreams and your visions that come from God, prematurely, you will never be able to speak such words. Jesus. Deuteronomy 23, 29, 29 says, secret things belong to God. But once revealed, they belong to us Amen. and our generations. There are people that God will reveal to you. He will bring revelations. He will drop stuff for you purposely so that you may know what is the plan of the enemy. He is equipping you so that you can say, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. He will place you in a position 
of knowledge. He will place you in a position of revelation. He will place you in a position of authority. Amen. That's what God does when he reveals things to us. He wants us to serve even our betrayer. True forgiveness serves. Amen. Regardless. Hallelujah. Pillar number two. True forgiveness forgives while under persecution. True forgiveness is released when the wounds are wet. True forgiveness is released when we are still persecuted. When, when stuff is still said about us, we forgive. When the wounds are dripping with blood, we forgive. Amen. When the gossip is still fresh, we forgive. That is true forgiveness. You don't wait and say, let me sleep over it. You don't say, no, let me give it some time. You know, I'm going to forgive this person maybe after six months. We often say time heals, but we never saw that we, with our Lord Jesus Christ. Time did not heal, but his revelation of God and the master plan of God released forgiveness. When the wounds were wet. True forgiveness. Releases. While it's still under persecution. Forgive. When the wounds are still wet. Forgive. When the wounds are still dripping with blood. Forgive. When your betrayer is still amongst the people who are around you, forgive. Amen. He is the Alpha. He is our Omega, the beginning and the end. We all look unto him Amen. for this lifestyle in Christianity. There is no Christianity. There is no lifestyle in Christianity without Jesus. So if he forgave while his wounds were wet, surely we can forgive while our wounds are wet. Amen. Hallelujah. Pillar number three. The pillars of true forgiveness. True forgiveness does not retaliate. True forgiveness does not retaliate. Isaiah 53 verse 7 it says as a sheep ready for slaughter oh yeah as a sheep ready for slaughter Jesus brought himself and he said no way he didn't plead his case he presented himself as a living sacrifice to his betrayer. He presented himself as a living sacrifice to his persecutor. Amen. He did not retaliate. He did not explain himself. Often the time when we hear stuff about our names, we want to explain ourselves. We want to vindicate ourselves. But God says, vengeance is mine. Pillar number four, true forgiveness restores. Doesn't make sense. It does not make sense. I must restore my enemy. I must restore my betrayer. No. Yes, when it does not make sense to you, it is of God. Amen. When it does not make sense to you, it is coming from God. Amen. And so if you be the child of God, 
You will not retaliate, but you will restore your enemy. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Peter draws the sword in John 18 verse 10. And he strikes the ear of one of the Roman people that were around Jesus. He is influenced by anger. But right next to him is Jesus who is influenced by destiny. Jesus who is influenced by the revelation that he has about the price that he has to pay for me and you. Yes. Still wounded, afflicted, undone, bruised, he restores the ear. Here's something that I want to share with you. When you are bruised, when you are afflicted, when you are undone, when people have gossip about you, when your heart is in pain, there is power to restore that you still contain. Often the time we look at our wounds, and you cry and you say, God, I cannot do it anymore. I cannot take it anymore. But I want to remind you today that there is power that is within you to restore your betrayer. Amen. There is power within you to bring that person into salvation when you do not retaliate, when you decide to restore. God has released with you the Think like Jesus in that situation. That when you are afflicted, you carry power. That when you are afflicted, you carry power to forgive the unforgivable. You carry power. You carry power to walk into heaven and draw some people out. To walk into hell and draw some people out with your prayer. You can pray out to God and say, Restore their softness of mind. Restore their softness of mind. Yes, I am undone. Yes, I am afflicted. Yes, I've been hurt. Yes, I've been gossiped about. But I'm to Jesus. Wet. 
I release forgiveness. True forgiveness, the last pillar. It is peaceful. Peaceful. It is peaceful. It is unshaken. It is peaceful. When you release forgiveness, you release it with peace. You don't call for people to say, look at me. I'm forgiving somebody. No. It is peaceful. You do it in your secret place. Amen. You release it in peace. You don't become dramatic. You don't call for crowds. But internally, you release people. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When Jesus did this, he set a precedent for all of us. And because we know that he was bruised, he was crushed before the foundations of the world, then we know that Stephanie must have seen the cross. Hallelujah in Acts 7. Stephanie must have envisioned the cross that when they stoned him, that when he dresses, his robes were taken from him. We hear Stephanie in the book of Acts 7 saying, Father, for do not cast this sin upon them. Do not count this sin upon them. We are talking about Stephanie. He is afflicted. Stones are being thrown at him, but he cries out to God. He says, do not count the sin upon them. upon them. He has envisioned the cross. I leave you with these words. If Stephan could cry under affliction and cry to the Lord not to release his wrath upon the people who were afflicting at that time, but he called out for salvation. He called out for salvation for he knew I've got power to pray people into heaven. He contended with hell and he spoke out of the pain and he said, Lord, do not count the sin upon them. In Acts number 9, Saul is converted to a great apostle. Because Stephanie prayed. And in Acts number 7, we realize and we are informed by scripture that the, the, the clothes of Stephan, they were taken to a boy who was sold. And we know that this is the very same soul that is receiving salvation in Acts number 9. I am encouraging you, Zalwane, the people that are afflicting you, pray them into salvation. The Lord shall bring his justice. He will justify them because of your prayer. He will justify them because you have served under affliction. He will justify them because you have decided not to retaliate but to restore. He will justify them because you served under persecution. He will justify them because you released forgiveness. When your wounds, when your scars were wet with blood, when your heart was stripped and broken and undone, you said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Hallelujah. It is the knowledge of God that will cause you to speak like that. It is the revelation of God that will cause you to speak like that. Hallelujah. Raise your hands where you are and stand on your feet. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we have heard your word, oh God. We have been undone, oh Father. We came to the foot of the cross with our faces veiled up. But as we hear about true forgiveness, our faces have been unveiled to scriptures to understand who you are and to understand your methodology of forgiveness. Take it further unto your people in the name of Jesus. I pray for restoration of revelation of God. I pray for a dose of 
the enemy. Yes. You are lifted up to your place of authority. You are lifted up to your place of revelation. You are lifted up, hallelujah, to call upon the Father who forgives all sins. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us welcome the servant of God, the great apostle of our time, the great apostle of our time, to take us, to take us into the second word. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord restore you. May the Lord really give you a hunger to implement and activate the word that you are about to hear in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. to God. Amen, amen. When God is in it, amen, amen. He is able to clean up those wounds. Mm. He is able to make all things abound. He is a great shepherd who is able to bind those wounds. Hallelujah. Forgiveness is possible, children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to the second word. It's also about forgiveness. It is also about forgiveness. Glory be to Jesus. But I want to look at it from a dimension of recognizing your defining moment. Recognizing your defining moment. Luke 23, verse number 43. No. Bible say now it was uh, um, in in they start from verse forty. But the other answering, you rebuked him and said, they start from thirty nine. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him and said. Jesus. In other words, he turned to Jesus. Then he turned to Jesus and said, and said to Jesus, uh, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. My God, and Jesus said, I surely I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Children of God, it, it is a critical thing. First lady, thank you so much for, for the Forgiveness. I don't want to spoil the word. Hallelujah. Let me just speak a little bit about uh, recognizing your defining moment, recognizing your golden moment, recognizing the opportunity. Oh my goodness, that it is in place before you. Recognizing the difference in the moment. Oh, I wish I'm somebody. You have to recognize the difference of the moment, the difference in the moment. You need to recognize your defining moment, recognize your golden opportunity. Yeah, he is a young man, he is my father, my God, with the mantle of Jesus Christ, while he is under the mantle. My how awesome and wonderful for brethren to dwell together for it is like all that is poor on the side by side and I see the mental of forgiveness flowing from above and this man realized there is an opportunity he realized that this is my defining moment he realized the difference in Jesus. He says, me and you, we deserve this. He said, but this man does not. This is a sinner who has never seen church. 
is the sinner who has never paid the tithe. He doesn't know the door of the church. Yet in the moment. golden opportunity he recognized the difference in Jesus he said with this one I'm not taking a chance I'm coming to his defense then he said what I need now a lot of people have laughed at me they thought I was a thief yet this was an opportune strategic appointment by God and I'm gonna utilize it even though I am persecuted I will utilize it let my mouth open the door for me any moment descend it descend it the golden opportunity that Jesus brings to us today maybe you are even watching me live i am saying you might be a christian but maybe you have failed to discern that one opportunity that is meant to define you that one opportunity that is meant to open doors for you that golden opportunity that you have never received in your entire life but jesus is alive he is on the cross the grace is still sufficient i call it the last minute grace when all hell is broken loose and people have written you off. You realize a golden opportunity and you can lie for his good. Learn to define. Learn to discern. That moment, first lady, that is meant to bring point of significance descend that opportunity what is presented before you it is a point of salvation he forgave and gave a sinner my God Uzi I have come for such Uzi I have come for such hallelujah a moment that was presented no one told this man he said to the other friend don't you fear god this man is just it means this man had a revelation of who jesus is and it's in line with revelation and the bible said jesus said today you shall be with me in paradise why Jesus didn't beg these guys. What was the difference between the one on the side and this particular one? It was a season of discerning and opportunity that strategically positioned by God to turn around his life 
and he entered heaven like that, we will find him in heaven. Amen. We will. Amen. I don't know about you. Amen. I don't know about you. But this sinner, this sinner, people are hiding in church. People are hiding in church. Imagine the group that was persecuting Jesus. None of them, none of them discern this opportunity. Yet somebody who was in pain and dying, last minute grace, the door was open, he entered heaven. Defining moment. Mm -hmm. It bling bling attire. It requires the eye of revelation. Mm -hmm. This son, this 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 thief, he had an eye of revelation. Right. He was able to discern. Yes. This is my point. I'm not gonna leave it. Amen. Somebody there at home, you are not born again. This is a moment to discern. And you're defining. Amen. Take this golden opportunity. Glory Amen. be to Jesus. There is a key of grace that God wants to release to you through this impartation. Receive Jesus. This is your moment. To tell you. This young man, he made a decision. He said, I don't care whether they laugh at me. After all, I've already been an embarrassment. Hallelujah. And Jesus opened. Jesus opened the door. I said, don't worry, today. He didn't remove. He didn't remove the cross. He didn't remove the cross. Amen. He said, but today, ah. because of your ability mm. to be able to discern that one moment that defines you for eternity, oh, I will give it to you. Amen. And he did. And he did. We need to pray for people who are under the cloud and the atmosphere of salvation. Yeah. Yet they still don't descend that that is That's their right. That's right. People are dying. <clears throat> they are going to hell. They can't utilize this, that last moment, that final hour, that final second, that final second child of God. Can see you into your position of significance. That's right. Well, Amen. This guy, according to the cross, according to the practice of the time, they wouldn't have been at the same level with Jesus. That's right. So Jesus had a higher cross, they were below him. Glory to Jesus. So grace will always flow right. from the top. From the, top. Oh. the anointing will always flow from, from the top. Oh, so this man didn't look at Jesus like this. He looked at Jesus Michael. like this. Son of man, will you remember me? When you get into your kingdom, can you see how structured the words are? The other one said, remove yourself and then save us. This other one says, I'm concerned about my eternal right. destiny. Right. Jesus, Son of God, will you remember me when you get into paradise? And Jesus looked at him like that. He said, today. You look at him like this, he said, today. Want us to go to the fourth word. John 19. John 19, children of God. John 19. Just want to move in for, for a moment. Um, uh, women, just for a moment. <clears throat> just to women for a moment. John 19. Amen. 
John 19, yes. <clears throat> now, the first word is about forgiveness. The second word is about forgiveness and salvation. The third word is about relationships. Glory to Jesus. Family of values, family standards. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Verse 26 says, <clears throat> When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciples, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. Now, <clears throat> Now I want uh, 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 the, the third one. Amen. Yes. Now I want uh, <clears throat> I want us just to, to look at uh, 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 here. I want us to 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 to, to, to look at uh, <clears throat> just this one principle. Amen. This one principle. Can I speak to women just for a moment? I want us to look at Mary just for a moment and I want to believe that women will understand the position Mary was in mm. but I wish to take you back a little bit how Mary conceived Jesus it was declared that it is a blessing and it was a favor from God now you ask yourself what kind of a favor that comes with a womb hidden and a cross hidden in my womb. Now, <clears throat> here's the thing that I want to talk to you about. First lady, I want to talk about the blood. Um, how Mary experienced the blood. First of all, he experienced the blood of Jesus when he gave birth. We are not sure if there was a, um, a midwife there. So, <clears throat> the truth of the matter is, Mary experienced the very blood of his son when he was born. Amen. Uh, women will tell you that there must be a change, there must be a novel, a cutting of the novel, and that novel, <clears throat> somehow, there has to be blood there. I, I see Mary as a woman of sorrow. Yet the sorrow that is being given to Mary, it is, the, it is sorrow of favor. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. All the circumstances that Jesus was to go through were hidden from Mary. Uh, you, you know, they were, they, were, they were not revealed to Mary in detail. I want to believe that if he knew that his son was going to be scourged, beaten, insulted, you rejected, he would have thought otherwise about the assignment. So now here is Jesus now. <clears throat> on, on the way to the cross, the Bible says they scourge him, mm. they beat him, 39 stripes. He, she experienced the second blood. She experienced the second blood of his child. Glory to Jesus through the death nice drive, the blood oozing from Jesus' ah, body. Yeah. A mother, oh my God. I, I wonder what kind of a prayer Mary was doing as she observed his only begotten son. Oh. The son who came as a pronouncement from above. Hallelujah, glory. He sees his son being beaten. Hallelujah. Left and right, the king, the cast, bad tear, glory. Blood gushing out from the oh, mouth. He looks at his son. His people have spat on his son. He looks at his son. He's saying, Is this my son? Is this the one who was prophetically pronounced by Isaiah? Is this the one who I got a greater salutation? Is this the one? He goes with him. He goes. He observes his own son being lifted up. He sees the first name being nailed on his arm. He sees the second one. Mary sees the dead one, glory to God. And in this particular moment, Mary is looking up to Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus is looking up to Mary. Yeah. And the blood is oozing. And the blood, I'm so Mary in a way. He remembered and somehow he remembered the blood he saw when he gave back to his own side. My God, let me speak to women. Oh, Mama Makaya, how would you feel if your only son is now being pursued?
persecuted. If your only son is now facing crucifixion, how would you feel, Mama Ekaya? Ubona, your only son, a persecutor by sinners. When you look on the right, what has my son done? He has healed the people. He has raised the dead. People are in glory because of him. What has my son done? When it is in that moment, as she looks at the blood of Jesus flowing from his body in excruciating pain on the cross, then Jesus realizes, I need to make sure that I don't leave my mother. After all, it is Jesus who said, I'm not going to leave you alone. I will make sure when I get to heaven, I ask the Father to release the Holy Ghost. But with his mother, he said, I will do it now. John, take care of your mother. John, take care of your mother. Mother, take care of John. My God, John was a way maker for the ministry of Jesus Christ. Who Jesus was not on the son of the Lord. He is making sure to share all of us in order. Hallelujah. Oh. 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 The soulful woman. Glory to God. Amen. Woman of soul. Woman of pain. Why booking Ganyak? Yeah. To the last point. Yeah. Do you ever think of the sorrow that Mary went through? Looking at his own son. Hallelujah. Yes. If you were touched by the story mm. of Floyd in the USA, how he was killed, how much more about Mary who observed her own son dying? He said to John, Son. Now the tone has changed. He doesn't say, but he says, Woman. He, the same words he used in John chapter 2. When Mary came and said, John is finished. He said, Woman. Don't you know that my time is not come? He uses the very same statement when he's hanging on the cross. Glory be to Jesus. The Bible says Jonah took him from the time. From the time. Hallelujah. From the time. Woman. He is a son. Son. He is a man. He is dealing with family values. Are you following what I'm saying? He is dealing with family values. Gemma Logo, we are celebrating the Passover. I plead with everyone under the sound of my voice. Amen. Let us make sure that we uphold family values. Let us learn from Jesus Christ. Amen. While he was paining, he was able to hold the pain, yes. first lady, yes. and still be sound Amen. in his judgment. And still be sound in his Amen. articulation of speech. Mm. Why? Yes, Lord. He had you in mind. Amen. Didn't want to make a mistake. Yes. Glory be to Jesus. May God restore families Amen. to this impartation. May God restore families. Hallelujah. May the blood that oozed from that cross. Yes, May it fall into the womb yes, of every family in the name of, the Jesus. Name of Jesus. Yes. May the sacrifice of the cross make sense even into your family. Scattered families, disintegrated families. May the words of Jesus Christ be the reason why you will come back together as a family and be bonded in love. Glory be to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Let us go to the fourth one, the third one, the fourth amen. one. Hallelujah, glory to the Jesus. Fourth one. The fourth one is found in uh, Matthew chapter 27, verse number 46. It's a painful one. Hmm. Matthew 27, verse 46. Um, you know, what do you do hmm. when you are now being left by the very same person that you thought will come to your aid. 
Now, from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over all the land. Sixth hour being 12 until 3. So there was darkness <clears throat> all over the land. And about the ninth hour, which is about 3 o'clock, I know that we are a bit ahead of time. Glory be to Jesus. He said, <clears throat> Jesus cried a loud voice <clears throat> and saying, Eloi, Eli, Eli, lama sabbatan. That is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Have you ever find yourself in a state wherein the very person that you trust most, the, the very person that you, you, you depend on, the, the, the very person that you've always had relationship on, and you have always told people, my father and I and I don't do anything except I see my father doing at your time and your point of need that same person is nowhere to be found at, at a point of need when we needed him most about being yourself it has got nothing to do with the next person Jesus is a perfect example he cried Father, he expressed his pain. Father, why have you forsaken me? In other words, he is saying, What have I done for you to turn away from me? Whatever, there is a time, brethren, whereby there is a war between ourselves and God. That did not stop Jesus from, uh, uh, did not stop him from shouting, Father, why have you forsaken me? In the midst of the dark hour, he spoke in the dark hour. Brother, there will be a dark hour in your life wherein when you turn to God, you will find him knowing the dark hour will come. That dark hour came hey. to Jesus. Yeah. Yes. You will find him knowing. Glory to God. When you cry to him, you will be silent. He was silent with the Israelites for more than 400 years. Quiet. He was silent with Abraham and Sarah for a long time. But his silence does not mean he is not processing. Yes. Jeremiah 29 11. I know the thoughts. I might be quiet. I might be quiet, but I'm processing. In my internet, I know what I'm already planning for you. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Who is feeling forsaken? Mm. Who has forsaken you? There's a promise with us. He says, I will not leave you, nor forsake you. Amen. If you can't feel me, if you can't sense my strength, still trust me. Oh. I am within your reach. Hallelujah. When you feel child of God, you are all by yourself. The devil is a liar. You are not all by yourself. Amen. He is right next to you. I like what Asaph said in, 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 in Psalm 73 verse 5. He says, until I came to the sanctuary of God, I saw their distance. Sometimes we are out of the boundary of God. That's why we are unable to see the mind of God. God is until we find ourselves in the same he saw Jesus rested in the womb of Elizabeth. Yes. When people saw a, 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 a woman, a, a, a woman by the name of Hannah, who was unable to conceive, God saw a the prophet of our time. Oh, Sometimes yeah. when God leaves us, it is our perfect moment to see and discern what the story between Malachi and Matthew that makes the deep, deep silence. Mm -hmm. Nothing was happening. No prophecy, no nothing.
because God functions well in darkness. In the book of Psalm 139, 10, 11, 12, it says, Even darkness is light to God, but the element things it is darkness, glory to God. So he functions well in a secret place. Hallelujah. How did he raise Lazarus? It was in the in the darkness of a, of, 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 of a grave, hallelujah. A he functioned there. Nobody saw what was happening at the perfect time. Alive. Glory be to Jesus. You will come up, child of God, even if you feel you are deserted. Even if you feel people are turning against you. Children of God. Eloi, Eli, Lama Sabata, Wami, Umishira, Umishira, why are you forsaking me? Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. 19, verse number 28. Number five. John verse number twenty-eight. John nineteen. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to Jesus. Mighty Father, mighty God, mighty God. Why? Sometimes we feel that we are thirsty. Sometimes we feel that we are thirsty. John 19 verse 28 says, uh, After this, Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished. The might be fulfilled. Amen. He said, I thirst. Now a vessel full of sour wine was sitting there and he saw and he put it to his mouth. Again, this was a try, <clears throat> trying time for Jesus. Have you ever asked something from somebody instead of giving you that one good thing? you get the worst of that person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, have you ever prayed when you thought you were, you were in the pinnacle of prayer and something negative happened? Yeah. Jesus is teaching us. Mm -hmm. When we depend on people who had ulterior motives about us, they will give us something that is meant to destroy us, not to quench our thirst. Mm -hmm. He thirsted, yet he says, if you knew who is asking this water, you would be asking the water from me. Because once you drink this water, you will thirst no more. But the water that you have, you will drink it and you will be thirsty again. Mm -hmm. We see Jesus on the cross, first lady, reminding us the speech that he had with the Samaritan woman. Yes. But this time around, he says, I thirst. He said to the Samaritan woman, Give me some water to drink. He was saying, I am thirsty. Oh. He repeats the same word here. Glory to God. Amen. The Samaritan woman asked for that same water. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. I don't know what is it that they have given you, child of God. I don't know what life has given you. You are asking for this. You are asking for this. Life is giving you a direct opposite of what you are asking. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. But there is something beyond this. Jesus said, I thirst. I pray that people can thirst after God. Amen. As a deer pants for water brook, according to Psalm 
und Programmen und is your God. You must say, God, these people wanted to see you. Show yourself in this particular situation. There is a river of life that we need to run to. This river is Jesus Christ. He said, want us to give us just a break. We take another break. We are running to three o'clock. We wanted to finish this thing the right way. Amen. Glory to Jesus. I'll ask the church to stand up. I just want us to pray. Glory to Jesus. I want us to pray for families. I want us to pray for, for those that have been abandoned. Some people, you know, uh, they were abandoned when they were in the verge of getting uh, uh, resources to go and study. Some were abandoned with uh, uh, propositions. Some, some, you see, but let, let's just pray. And then, then let's pray that people thirst after the true water of life. Let us just pray that let us thirst after the true water. And our dependence is not on men. Our dependence is on God. Glory be to Jesus. I want us just to pray. Then um, we will then uh, have a break. Glory to Jesus. Have a break. Then we will uh, come back and recoup again. We do the last two words. Glory to Jesus. And that will be the end for today. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. My God, under this grace. Under this grace, oh Lord. I pray, almighty God. A release of a grace and an anointing for families. We, are hungry. we know, oh Father God, when the enemy wants to attack you, he attacks you via the gate of families. I pray, Father God, that there be a seal. Seal, almighty God, the gates of these families. Bind them together. Bring them together in the covenant of marriage. I pray that you do this for what your son did on the cross. I pray for the God, disintegrated families, to families that don't speak to each other, families that have got no relationship. My God, I pray for the womb of that woman who is going through excruciating pain because of problems in her family, because of problems with the children. Lord, I pray that love that you showed it to your mother Mary, that you showed to John. My God, I pray release unto every family. Remember them, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, in their houses, fence of their homes, in the mighty name of Jesus. Protect and secure their life in the name of Jesus. Sit upon the priest in these houses, the fathers of these houses, the men of these houses. I pray, Father God, that you sit on them in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I bring unto you, I bring unto the foot of the cross every brother and sister who has been abandoned. Lord, I pray that you reveal yourself. Show yourself, Almighty God, that you are a God, oh Lord Almighty, who is able to lift us up when our dependent acquaintances has abandoned us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray a release that we entirely depend on you, oh God. Depend on you for resources. Depend on you for opportunities name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth depend on you for our salvation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth Lord we thank you that Lord when we ask of you of the water of life you are able to give it to us my God I pray the grace and the anointing of the deer that pants for water blue. my God I pray that we hunger for you oh God may you release the water of life that gushed out of your son unto these your children in the name of Jesus. 
I declare and I decree all things are perfect. All things are beautiful. All things are working together. They will test you no more for we will drink of the water of life. We are not going to drink vinegar. We are not going to drink any substance from the enemy. But we are drinking from you, almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Quench us, O oh Lord. I pray that God quenches your thirst. Amen. A thirst for worldly appetite. Amen. May he take us. Yes, I pray that God releases the water of life. Mm. That you will thirst for the pure water. That once you drink of it, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. You are a blessing to many. You just have not realized. Get to the water of life and see what God will do. People will come and drink of you. You are a perfect stream. You are an unpolluted well. You are destined by God to provide water of life to different people, different nations. In Jesus' mighty name, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Children of God, let us take a water break one more time. We are left with just two items. Amen. Glory to God. We're going to take a water break. We're going to convene, convene again. We're going to convene again. Amen. Around about half past two. Glory to Amen. Jesus. Amen. Remember, Jesus died at three o'clock. Hmm. We are following the timetable. We are observing that. This is our day. We are not rushing anywhere. We give God the glory. We have to observe this in Amen. Jesus' mighty name. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you for connecting once again. See you in the next 30 minutes. Amen. God bless you. Amen.